Hi everyone, my name is Walter Rowe. I'm a Capture One affiliate. Today, I wanna to talk about why I love layers in Capture One. Layers are really powerful. Layers allow you to paint in a mask in a particular area. You can paint in the mask with opacity. The brush can be adjusted to make the mask uh, more or less dense. So it doesn't have to be a uniform density across the entire mask. Uh, and uh, it gives you really ability to fine tune. And then each layer itself can also have an opacity uh, and you can have a luma range uh, for the uh, for the mask, which allows you to uh, define the tonal range that the adjustments of the layer affect. In this photograph, I have three layers. I have a layer of the foreground. I have a layer of the building. And I have a layer of the sky. I purposely made these three layers because the original photograph was very underexposed and I wanted to control the areas of the photograph independently. Here's the original photograph. It was very underexposed. It was a, an older model camera. Uh, it, it had noise at higher ISO, so I used a lower ISO. In order to retain shutter speed at the lower ISO, I underexposed by two stops. And the orientation uh, isn't good because I was not holding the camera to my eye. I was actually pressing the back of the camera against a small little statue. Uh, so I couldn't see the orientation, but the statue uh, enabled me to have a stable platform to press against to keep the camera still. Again, trying to maintain maximum sharpness for the photo. This variant, I've corrected the keystone. Uh, you can see the building's more upright. The, I don't have convergence of the vertical lines. You can see it's level now. Uh, so now I can really start my adjustments. So I just wanted to give you a, a kind of a brief understanding of, of where this picture started. In this variant, it's very bright. I have made some adjustments on the background layer. I've added two stops of exposure. Now you can see the sky is very bright. It's actually too bright. Um, the uh, foreground is nicely exposed. The building's a bit too warm. It's a bit too yellow. So I'm going to have to do some things to correct the building. I want to bring out some more detail in the stonework of the building. And I want to correct the color of the sky. I want to bring out a little detail in these bushes here in the foreground. So that's why I chose to make three different layers. In order to make these layers, I started with the building. I did that because the building itself is rather uniform color and nicely divides the picture in half. Uh, you can use the color editor and make a color pick. And from the color editor, I can create a layer using the color range in the color editor. It creates a layer and a mask. I'm going to do that. It automatically selects the layer. I'm going to rename that building. I'm going to go back to background. I'm going to turn this off. You can see when I enable the view selected color range that the building remains the color uh, that was in the original picture, but the sky and the foreground area uh, goes to um, grayscale. That tells you that those grayscale areas are not part of the color range that are in this uh, color editor selection area, which is perfect. I want to get to the building. So now I have the building masked. It's got a few things that are extra that don't need to be in there. Some of the, this bush, some of this grassy area don't need to be in it. I can just uh, quickly use the eraser to erase those out of the masked area. Uh, it's nice that we actually have a, a kind of a horizontal line across the front of the building that we can quickly paint across. I'll just get rid of the areas on this bush here. And that kind of gets me right in there. In the building itself, some of the roof wasn't uh, exactly in the color range, so I just go back and add those in. I have the feature enabled 
I'll bring this up here. You can see I have auto mask enabled in the brush. So as I paint, uh, if the brush goes a little bit over the area that I'm painting, it actually uh, does not uh, color that extra area. It actually leaves that out of the mask. It finds the edges and it knows that I'm just trying to paint in these little areas here. So here we go. I've got but that. Well, there's still some areas in the building that weren't quite selected properly. Um, rather than painting everywhere, I'm actually going to go in and do a fill mask. So now you see I've actually filled in these areas pretty well. Now I've got my building filled in. Uh, I can go and do refine mask. I can actually uh, refine that even further. And this will uh, really tell Capture One to extend the mask out into the little uh, nuanced, very detailed areas and, and make a nice, very fine selection on that mask uh, without me having to go and manually paint it in by hand. It makes it really fast and it's very convenient. And it's very powerful. I'm going to disable the mask. Here now we see I've got the building and I've got the mask. Now I want a layer for the sky and a layer for the foreground. Well, one of the great features of layers is I can copy a mask from another layer. So now I've got a new layer, layer one. I'm going to copy mask from building. I'm going to show you the mask. So now layer one has the same mask as the building. And on layer one, I'm going to invert the mask. Now I've got a mask of the foreground. And I've got a mask of the sky and no mask of the building. I'm going to create a new layer, layer two, and I'm going to copy that layer mask from layer one. So in layer one, I'm going to change that to foreground so I know what that is. And in the foreground, I don't want the sky. So I'm going to make a great big brush and I'm going to Remove all the mask on the sky. So here you can see it doesn't take very long at all with a really big brush. I mean this this picture really lends itself well to to doing this quickly because of how nicely divided the, the picture is. So there's the foreground. Now in layer two. I'm going to call that sky. And in sky, I want to erase the foreground mask. Again, nicely, nicely divided picture makes this rather quick. Not every picture works this quickly, but I was lucky in this case. Okay, so we have foreground, we have building, and we have sky. That didn't take very long at all. I'm going to go to the finished photograph. Once again, I'm going to show you, we have foreground, building, and sky. Perfect. Now, as I stated, the original background layer, I had made considerable adjustments. Increased the exposure by two stops, increased the high dynamic range shadow recovery quite a bit. I fixed the white balance, kind of a general white balance for the overall picture. Now I want to adjust the building itself. In the building, I have changed the white balance to be a little less yellow. I could actually even go a little less yellow if I wanted, bring it down here. Looks good. Oops, nope, that is way too, way too low. Okay, so there we go. Not quite so warm. And then I also uh, raise the exposure a tad, raise the brightness a bit, increase the clarity and structure, and in the details I added sharpening. That really helped bring out the details of the stonework in the building and all the little lights. That's the focal point of the photograph I really wanted to stand out. Next I went to the foreground and I made adjustments in the foreground. I lowered the contrast and the brightness, uh, and I raised the shadow detail. That enabled me to keep the coloring and the luminance that I want in the grass 
but bring out detail uh, in the little foliage that's underneath these two bushes in the foreground. And then I wanted to adjust the sky. So the sky is too bright. I want to bring the sky back down. So on the sky layer, notice I didn't make any exposure adjustment on the sky layer. In the sky layer, I chose to use the color editor again. Here I've selected the color of the sky. As you can see, this left tile represents the same color as the sky, and the right tile represents the new color of the sky. And you can see in the color editor, the advanced color tab, I have lowered the lightness of the sky by 30 points. I didn't change the saturation of the hue, I just lowered the lightness. So this keeps the, uh, the nice darkness in the sky that I wanted and that I actually saw. I chose to use the color editor to lower the color in the sky, to, to darken the sky, uh, because it maintains the color fidelity of the sky. It makes it a darker blue. It doesn't make it a... Um, if, if I use the exposure, let me go over here to the exposure, and I bring the exposure down, you'll notice that I don't maintain the same color richness of the sky. It has a different look to it. It's a little more dull. So when I go to the color editor and I use, I'm just going to do undo here so I can get back to where I wanted. Okay, so you see that I have the lightness now at, at minus 30. Uh, I maintain the richness of the color that I, that, I, that I really saw. I didn't lose any, it didn't make it any more dull. Using the exposure tool uh, it tends to not maintain the same color fidelity in my experience. So I hope this helps demonstrate the power of using layers in Capture One. It really is a layer-oriented editing tool. Uh, it's terrifically powerful. Uh, and the ability to paint a mask on a layer and use all of the tools, every tool that has a little pencil icon or paintbrush icon next to the name tells you that you can use that tool on a layer uh, with your layer mask. You can use the only, the only tools you can't use are vignetting and noise uh, and um, one or two other, or the basic characteristics. Uh, most every other tool you can use on a layer with a layer mask. This is a really, really powerful tool, uh, layers. And masking allows you to paint your mask in one time and select the area that you want to adjust rather than um, some other tools on the market where you actually have to paint in the uh, mask effectively with every single tool. Every adjustment with every tool uh, as you paint in the area that you want it to apply to. Uh, that's very inefficient um, and it doesn't give you kind of that uniformity of those adjustments. Whereas having layers and a, and a single mask for the entire layer gives you the uniformity of the adjustments across the whole layer uh, by having just the one mask that you have to worry about. I hope this has been helpful for you. hope it uh, really illustrates the power of layers and layer masks and the ability to make unique adjustments within them. Again, my name is Walter Rowe. I'm a Capture One affiliate. If you wouldn't mind, uh, if you want to make a purchase of uh, style packs or if you want to upgrade or buy a subscription or a license for Capture One, uh, there's a link in my profile. I would appreciate your uh, using that affiliate link when you make your purchase. Tells phase one that I'm uh, that my videos are helpful and useful to you. You appreciate my videos and uh, gives me a small referral fee. Thanks very much. Have a wonderful day.